Hello everybody, how are you? I'm here in the town of Washington, or near the town of Washington, Pennsylvania, on a beautiful day. Beautiful, no humidity, soft, cool weather. Of course, it's still relatively early in the day. It'll probably go up to 80. But for now, it's beautiful. And I just did a video about three fun facts about this area, Washington, Pennsylvania. You might want to take a look at that. This is three more fun facts, and it deals more specifically with this area I'm in, which is just off the interstate. You can see the wheels of commerce rolling up there on the hill as trucks go to and from their destinations. But this is interesting. It's a shopping center parking lot right now. In the old days, uh, it used to be a polo ground. And now this area also was, and I don't know about today, but at one time was a, had a heavy Amish population. And so the Amish, of course, uh, a lot of horse and buggy uh, transportation in their community. And they got really interested in the polo grounds and they started a horse and buggy polo league. And so it's similar to regular polo. But, of course, you have the horse and buggy. You get the buggy. And it's, it's the way it was described to me, it was a combination of demolition derby, polo, and uh, downtown Pittsburgh at 5 o'clock on Friday. Now, you might think, well, the Amish don't seem like the type of people that would get into what could, could end up being a fairly you know, violent and uh, dangerous sport but guys the Amish are extremely competitive and uh, they get out there you get you get them out there on the polo grounds with their horse and buggy all of a sudden it's uh, Mario Andretti in, a, in an Amish hat now they did have to follow the safety regulations of the league uh, one of which was they had to wear a helmet however some of the players, some of the participants didn't want to wear a helmet because they had a hat. They had a hat and they felt that the hat was a religious item that they couldn't uh, take off, especially because a lot of the games were played on Sunday's afternoon after, after services. Not games, they're matches. Buggy uh, polo matches. Uh, so, they very inventive community they created special helmets for horse and buggy polo that go over the hat and so the brim of the hat sticks out below the helmet it's a unique design you have to see pictures of it you can check it out on google uh but but that then allowed the players that might not have participated to bring their horse and buggy and have at it and guys until you've seen I've seen video of it until you've seen horse and buggies flying around a polo grounds at 40 50 miles an hour horses digging in and the dirt flying and the guys got the crack in the whip and the I mean it's just unbelievable and sometimes they flip over I saw one video a guy rolled it he rolled the horse and the buggy rolled 360 degrees so the horse and the buggy are upright they rolled together and the horse was up in the air, so he didn't get hurt at all. Because the buggy uh, was kind of holding him up. And they rolled completely over. And then the guy kept playing. He kept playing. <laughs> Unbelievable. So a lot of that took place in the early days here in uh, this community. And, of course, the video I'm talking about is of recent matches that they do to, as a reenactment to honor their... Uh, forefathers that started the started the sport here amazing and so he said this particular lot here was one of the original horse and buggy polo grounds and as i understand it there's a bronze plaque at the entrance to this parking lot i didn't uh, notice it and i'll check it out when i leave that talks about this was the site where it all started so that's uh, fun fact number one. Now, fun fact number two is that there was a, there is a major retailer 
that started right in this shopping center. And it's called Country King. Now, Country King currently has 7,000 stores throughout the United States. And they specialize in products and services geared toward a farming and country audience. So they're only in rural areas. You're not going to find them in downtown Pittsburgh. Uh, you're not going to find them in downtown... Uh, you're going to find them... Not even going to find them in downtown Ashtabula. Okay? Or uh, Green Tree. You're just going to find them out here where the air is clean and the prices are low. And that, in fact, that was their first slogan for the first 10 years when they opened in 1925. The air is clean and the prices are low. So they didn't. So you could you could say they they had a desperate need for an ad agency. And unfortunately, they've decided to just be their own ad agency the whole time at Country King. And so some of the slogans, subsequent slogans over the years, were not much better. Uh, so the air is clean and the prices are low. That was in the, in the 20s through the 30s. And by the 40s, they came up with Country King, where prices are royal and so are you. And uh, it's like, oh, ouch. You really need a copywriter. Can, they, can we get a copywriter? Uh, but they, they persisted because it's a family operation. And, you know, sometimes... Sometimes when a family member wants to do something, you just kind of let them do it because they're so excited about it. You don't want to discourage them. And uh, there's always that one guy that wanted to do the slogans. And uh, so by the 50s, they got a new slogan, and it was Country King. We're out in the country because that's where you should come find us. And, ooh... That is not good, guys. And uh, that was done by one of the cousins that uh, wanted wanted to write ad copy. So the board let him do it. But, uh, wow. Ouch. Ouch. That's not so good. But amazing how the, the company has grown over the years. 7,000 stores. They started right here in this parking lot. And their very first store wasn't even a store. They just roped off an area and uh, set up some tables, right? They were selling some apple pies. They had a couple burros they had for sale, a couple of horses. They had a chicken, right? And for the first summer, all they sold was pies, chickens, and burros, an occasional horse. And then they uh, broadened the uh, product line. You know, you know and now they, they're selling products, farm equipment, all kinds of stuff. One of the most popular fun fact number three in our final fun fact is guess what is the best selling product at every country king? I mean, overall, not a not each store, but the best selling country king product of all time. You're not going to guess. It's a food item. You give up? Yep, that's right. It's burnt toast on a stick. Now, you say, wait a minute. But it's true. It's a concoction they came up with in the early days. And they were trying to sell toasters. And they just kept burning toast. And the guy was getting frustrated. And one of the uh, creative ladies, that one of the family members, a creative uh, aunt, she's like, well, why are you getting mad? This is this is this is great. Take these burnt toasts and sell them. Just put them on sticks like this one. And she reached down, and there were some dowel rods they were selling in the housewares department. She jammed that burnt toast on the dowel rod, and she started walking around and handing them out of samples and, and put some butter on them. And people were like going crazy. And it became the best-selling item on a volume basis, not on a price or a revenue basis, but on a pure volume basis is burnt toast on a stick uh, at the Country King retail chain to this day. Amazing. But it shows what innovation and creativity can do to overcome marketing challenges and what might be seen what might be originally seen as mistakes or setbacks 
can catapult you to a much higher level. Well, guys, that's three more fun facts about Washington, Pennsylvania. Come back. We're going to have a lot more fun.